All right. So uh, have you ever thought about like where your pork shop comes from? Mm-hmm. You know, like beyond the grocery store. Yeah. Yeah. It turns out a lot of pig feed relies on fish meal. Right. Which, you know, isn't the most sustainable thing in the world. Yeah. But what if there was a way to raise pigs on something like totally different? Mm-hmm. Something like leftover food scraps. Interesting. Yeah. Get ready for this. We're diving into the world of black soldier fly larval meal. Wow. Or BSFLM for those in the know. That sounds pretty wild. <laughs> right. But it's a real thing. And researchers are finding some incredible results using this insect-based protein to, you know, feed pigs. Yeah. We're basing this deep dive on a 2021 study from the Journal of Insects as Food and Feed. Okay. And these researchers actually replaced fish meal with BSFLM in pig diets. Interesting. And tracked what happened. So they wanted to know if BSFLM could really measure up to fish meal. Right. In terms of how well the pigs grew, how healthy they were, and even the quality of the meat. Exactly. So why pigs? Mm. Why not say cows or chickens? Well, pigs are actually a really vital part of the food system, especially in areas like sub-Saharan Africa. Mm, Okay. For a lot of smallholder farmers. Uh, Pigs are like a major source of income and nutrition. Right. But in these regions, conventional protein sources like fish meal can be really expensive and hard to come by. Okay. So that's where our buzzing friends come in. You're right. But before we get into the nitty gritty of the study, can you kind of break down what makes black soldier flies so special? Sure. Besides their apparent taste for trash, that is. Well, that trash eating habit is actually a big part of their appeal. Okay. They're like little recycling machines. Ooh turning that organic waste into high-quality protein. Wow. Their larvae are packed with nutrients that pigs need to thrive, Mm -hmm. like essential amino acids and even minerals. Okay, but how do they compare to fish? I mean, fish are basically swimming protein, right? Yeah, you're right. Fish are a great source of protein. Yeah. But it's not just about the amount of protein. It's about having the right types of amino acids and other nutrients in the right proportions for a specific animal. Right. And in this case, the research suggests that BSFLM can actually hold its own against fish meal Okay. in terms of pig nutrition. All right, let's get into the experiment itself. Okay. What exactly did these researchers do? They got pretty meticulous with their study. Okay. They divided the pigs into groups and fed them different diets, mm-hmm. replacing the fish meal with varying levels of BSFLM. Okay. 25%, 50%, 75% and even a whopping 100% in some cases. So some pigs were eating a full-on insect diet. Yeah. I am intrigued, but also a little grossed out. I get it. What kind of things did they measure to see if this bug-based diet was actually working? They looked at all sorts of factors. First, they tracked the pig's growth, seeing how much weight they gained each day, Yeah. and how much feed they needed to gain that weight. Right. They also analyzed the carcasses. Okay. Basically, the meat yield, looking at things like how much meat they got from each pig. Oh. And the proportion of different cuts. I'm guessing they also checked to make sure the meat itself wasn't, you know, glowing in the dark or anything. Uh Uh-huh. No glowing pork chops here. Okay, good. They did assess the meat quality, though. Okay. They measured the fat content. Right. Which can be a good thing, depending on what consumers are looking for. Right. They even analyzed the nutritional composition of the pork itself. Hmm. to see how it's stacked up in terms of protein and mineral content. Okay, drum roll, please. What were the results? Hmm. Did those little bug eaters actually thrive? Get this. The pigs on the higher BSFLM diets, the 50% and 100% groups, yeah, actually showed better growth than the pigs who were just eating fish meal. Wait, so eating bugs made them grow faster? It seems so. That's wild. Yeah. What else did they find? Not only did they grow faster, uh, but they also reached a higher final body weight. Okay. And their feed conversion ratio was better. Mm. Now, that might sound technical, but essentially it means they were more efficient at turning their food into body mass. So it's like they unlocked some secret pig growth code with these bugs. Yeah, you could say that. That's pretty remarkable. I'm guessing this could be huge for farmers, especially those who struggle to afford expensive feed. Right. But we're just getting started. Join us in part two, where we'll dig even deeper into what these findings really mean. It's good. Welcome back. We're knee deep in the world of black soldier fly larval meal. And let me tell you, it's getting pretty interesting. Yeah. We've seen how this insect-based protein kind of stacks up against traditional fish meal. Mm -hmm. But now I'm curious, like, what does this actually mean for pig farming? Mm. Especially in places like Kenya, where we mentioned fish meal can be hard to come by. That's a great question. And this is where the research really starts to have some real-world implications. Right. Imagine 
You're a farmer in Kenya. Okay. Struggling to afford fish meal to feed your pigs. Yeah. Suddenly, you have this alternative BSFLM, which is potentially cheaper and readily available. Uh -huh. That's a game changer. Absolutely. It's like finding a hidden treasure chest full of pig feed. <laughs> right. But hold on. Isn't there a bit of a uh, ick factor involved? Uh -huh. I mean, seeding bugs to the animals we eat? Yeah. How do we know that won't affect like the taste or the quality of the pork? I get it. The idea of insects as food takes some getting used to. Right. But remember, we're not talking about serving up whole bugs on a plate. Yeah. This is about using insects as a sustainable and nutritious ingredient in animal feed. Right. And the study found that BSFLM actually didn't negatively impact the meat quality. So no funky bug flavored pork chops. Nope. That's a relief. But what about the nutritional value? Okay. Is pork from BSFLM fed pigs just as good for us as regular pork? This is where things get really exciting. Okay. The researchers analyzed the pork from the BSFLM fed pigs. Uh-huh. And guess what? It was packed with protein and minerals. In some cases, it even had higher levels of certain nutrients than pork from pigs fed a conventional diet. Wow. So not only are the pigs growing bigger and faster, right. but the meat itself might be even healthier. It seems that way. That's a win-win. Yeah. But let's zoom out for a second. Okay. We've talked about like the economic benefits for farmers mm -hmm. and the potential health benefits for consumers. Right. But what about the bigger picture? Hmm. How does this tie into global food security? That's a crucial point. Okay. As the global population keeps growing, yeah. the demand for protein is going up, up, up. Right. We need to find sustainable ways to feed everyone. Mm -hmm. And relying on traditional protein sources like fish meal and soy yeah. just isn't going to cut it in the long run. I see what you mean. We can't keep emptying the oceans or clearing forests just to feed our livestock. Exactly. We need alternatives, and BSFLM seems like it could be a real contender. I think so. But is it really scalable? I mean, can we realistically produce enough bugs to make a dent in the global demand for protein? That's the million dollar question. Right. Scaling up production is a big challenge, but it's not impossible. Okay. Remember, black soldier flies are incredibly efficient at converting waste into protein. Right. They can be raised on organic waste streams that we're already generating. Uh huh. Which means we don't necessarily need huge amounts of land or resources to farm them. So instead of seeing waste as a problem, we could actually use it to create a valuable resource. Exactly. That's pretty clever. But I'm also thinking about those farmers in Kenya we talked about earlier. Yeah. Even that BSFLM is cheaper than fish meal. Yeah. Isn't there a cost involved in setting up insect farms? Right. And processing the larvae into meal? Uh-huh. Could it actually be economically feasible for them to make the switch? That's where things get a little more complicated. Okay. The economics of BSFLM production are still being studied. Right. And there are a lot of factors to consider. Like the cost of labor, energy, and equipment. Mm -hmm. It's not just a simple matter of swapping out one ingredient for another. So we need more research to figure out if it's actually financially viable for farmers to embrace this insect revolution? I think so. Okay. I'm starting to see that this isn't just about the bugs themselves. It's about a whole system. Yeah. A whole ecosystem of factors that need to align for this to really take off. That's right. But let's shift gears for a moment. Okay. And talk about the research itself. Right. Were there any limitations to this study or things that future research should focus on? Every study has its limitations, and this one is no exception. Right. Remember they used a specific breed of pig? Yeah. A hybrid of large white and land race. Okay. And the study was conducted in a controlled environment. So the results might not be generalizable to all pigs or all farming systems? That's possible. What else do we need to know? We need more research to see how BSFLM performs with other breeds of pigs. Okay. And in different farming systems. Uh -huh. Like those smallholder farms in Kenya we've been talking about. Right. It's important to replicate this study in different settings yeah. to see how the results hold up in the real world. That makes sense. We can't just assume that what worked in a lab will automatically translate to success on a farm. Right. What about the fact that they replaced fish meal entirely in some of the diets? Hmm. Would it be more realistic to look at partial replacements? Yeah. Maybe blending BSFLM with other protein sources? You're thinking like a scientist? Uh-huh. That's a great point. Thanks. While this study showed that 100% replacement was possible, right. it's likely that a more balanced approach would be more practical and economically viable for farmers. Uh-huh. Future research could explore the optimal ratios of BSFLM 
to other protein sources for different animals and production systems. This is really making me think about the potential ripple effects of this research. Mm. It's not just about pigs. Right. It's about creating a more resilient and sustainable food system that can adapt to the challenges of a growing population and a changing world. That's a fantastic way to put it. Thanks. And the really exciting part is that we're just scratching the surface of what's possible with insect-based protein. Right. Who knows what other innovations and discoveries await us in the future? Well, we're definitely going to keep our eyes peeled and our ears perked for any new developments in this buzzing field of research. Good plan. But for now, we're going to take a quick break and come back with a final part of our deep dive. Where we'll wrap things up and leave you with some food for thought, no pun intended. Sounds good. Stay tuned. And we're back for the final leg of our Black Soldier Fly Larval Meal Adventure. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the potential of BSFLM to, like, revolutionize pig farming mm -hmm. and maybe even the entire food system. Right. But uh, before we wrap up, I think it's important to acknowledge that with any new technology, yeah. there are always questions and even concerns. Oh, you know, well. it's like every solution can have side effects. Absolutely. We can't just assume that BSFLM is a perfect solution right? without considering the potential downsides or challenges that might pop up along the way. So let's put on our skeptical hats for a minute. Okay. What are some of the potential drawbacks or like unintended consequences of widespread BSFLM adoption? Well, one concern that comes up is the potential for disease transmission. Mm. It's just like any animal feed. Yeah. We need to make sure the BSFLM is carefully handled and processed right to ensure it's free from any harmful bacteria or parasites right it's like trading one headache for another yeah we need some serious quality control measures in place yes to make sure that, that the bsflm is safe you know for the pigs and ultimately for us the consumers right what else should we be thinking about another challenge is the scalability of insect farming okay we've seen a surge in small scale insect farms popping up uh, which is great yeah but to meet the massive demand of large-scale animal agriculture, yeah. we'd need to ramp up production significantly. Yeah. That requires investment, innovation, and a whole lot of infrastructure. It sounds like we're talking about a whole new industry here. Mm. Not just raising the bugs, yeah. but processing them. Right. Processing them. Right. Transporting them. Mm -hmm. Figuring out the whole supply chain. That's right. There's a lot to consider. And then there's the regulatory side of things. Mm. Different countries have different rules about insect farming yeah. and the use of insects in animal feed. It can be a bit of a wild west out there. Right. And we need clear regulations to ensure that BSFLM is produced safely and ethically. That makes sense. We wouldn't want a free-for-all where everyone's just making up their own rules. No. We need standards in place. Right. So taking all of this into account, okay. the potential drawbacks, uh, the logistical hurdles, yeah. the regulatory unknowns. Mm. Do you still believe that the benefits of BSFLM outweigh the risks? I do. I really believe that BSFLM has the potential to be a game changer. The world is facing a serious protein shortage. Right. And conventional protein sources are putting a strain on our planet. Yeah. BSFLM offers a solution that is both sustainable and nutritious. Uh -huh. And I think that's worth fighting for. I'm with you. It's not a magic bullet, and there are still some kinks to work out. Right. But the potential is undeniable. I agree. It's like we're standing at the edge of a new frontier, and it's both exciting and a little bit daunting. I think that's a great way to put it. There's a sense of adventure and discovery here. Yeah. And who knows, maybe one day we'll all be enjoying insect-based protein in our own diets. Hmm. Interesting. But for now, let's focus on the incredible impact BSFLM could have on animal agriculture. Right. And creating a more sustainable food system for everyone. Well said. It's been quite a journey exploring the world of black soldier fly larval meal. It has. We've covered a lot of ground from the science behind it uh, to the economic and environmental implications. Yeah. And even the ick factor that some people might have. But hopefully we've sparked your curiosity and given you some food for thought. I hope so. No pun intended. Uh, this is an evolving field and new research is emerging all the time. That's right. So stay curious. Keep asking questions. And maybe even try a cricket or two. Good idea. You never know. You might be pleasantly surprised. Right. And on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive into black soldier fly larval meal. Thanks for joining us. It was my pleasure. Until next time, happy listening.